advantage. So remember that comparative advantage is when an individual, a business, or a country can produce a good or service at the lower opportunity cost. Compare that to absolute advantage, that means that a, an individual, a business, or a country can produce more of a certain product. So when we talk about economic growth, um, we're talking about, again, how do we push our production possibilities curve outwards? So I'm going to use the concept of comparative advantage in economic growth to describe international trade and why we engage in international trade. So if this is a country's production possibilities frontier, we know that producing at any point is efficient, but if we want to produce over here, we need to have more resources. The only way to produce at this level and to grow the economy would be to grow our land, our labor, our capital, or our entrepreneurial ability. But another option is to engage in trade. Okay, so we're going to take a look at two countries, the United States, and Canada. And I'm going to assume that these countries can produce only two items. They can produce aircrafts, oops, aircraft, and pork. And Canada can produce aircrafts or pork. So here are the combinations. The United States can produce 1,500 pounds, or 1,500 pounds, 1,500 aircrafts, or zero pounds of pork. Another option is to produce zero aircrafts and 3,000 pounds of pork. Okay. So if we're going to graph this out, we're going to put our aircraft on the x-axis, and we'll put pork on the y-axis. Okay. Remember that zero is at the origin. Okay. So they can produce 1,500 or zero. So if this is our x-axis. That's going to be 1,500 aircrafts and zero pounds of pork. That's one possible combination. Or they can produce zero aircrafts and 3,000 pounds of pork. So we connect that, and that becomes the production possibilities curve for the United States. Any combination here will work for them, but they can produce over here. Okay, this is unattainable. I'm going to call that point U, unattainable. All right, Canada can produce 3,000 aircraft or zero pounds of pork, and the U.S. Um, or it can produce zero aircraft and 1,500 pounds of pork. So we're going to draw their production possibilities curve. Aircraft, pork. So aircraft's on the x-axis, pork is on the y-axis, zero is at the origin. The first combination is 3,000 and zero pounds of pork. The second combination is zero aircraft and 1,500 pounds of pork. So this is Canada's PPF. They can produce anywhere along that PPF, but they can't produce that point U because that's unattainable. That make sense? So now, what I want you to do is I want you to figure out which country has the comparative advantage in the production of aircraft, and which country has the comparative advantage in the production of pork? Okay. So that means that we have to find the opportunity cost of producing these items. So remember that the formula for opportunity cost is what you give up over what you get. And how do we state this? We say 
the opportunity cost of one airplane is blank pounds of pork. Okay, and you want to do this for the U.S. and for Canada. Okay, so you're going to have one for the United States and one for Canada. The opportunity cost of one airplane is blank pounds of pork. And then we want to figure out the opportunity cost of pork for the U.S. of one pound of pork. Oh, it's actually aircraft. Canada. two minutes to work this out and you can tell me where the opportunity cost is lowest. Okay. What we're asking is, what do I have to give up to get something else? That's the opportunity cost. Remember, opportunity cost is what you gave up to be here. You guys gave up breakfast, you gave up lunch, you gave up money to be in the class, right? In this case, as a country, we're asking, well, if the United States is only going to produce aircrafts or airplanes, what does it have to give up? So if it is only going to produce over here, will it be able to produce anything else? No. If all land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability is over here, remember one of the key assumptions is full utilization of your resources, then you have no resources to produce anything else. So what we're trying to see is, well, how much did it cost us? to just focus our resources on aircrafts. So, in the US, if we want to get 1,500 aircraft, how many pork bellies do we have to give up? 3,000. 3,000. So, we can reduce that, and it becomes two over one. Okay. How would we read this? Well, we would say the opportunity cost for the United States, of one airplane is two pounds of pork, or two, what, however trillion pounds of pork is. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Then, let's go to Canada and ask the same question. If Canada wants to focus all of its resources right here with nothing left over, what does it have to give up? Fifteen hundred pounds of pork. So for Canada, they're going to give up fifteen hundred pounds of pork, and they're going to get how many airplanes? Three thousand. So their opportunity cost is one half. So we say we're going to plug it in over here. We say the opportunity cost for Canada, one airplane is half a pound of pork. So we're basically expressing the cost of something in terms of something else. We normally express the cost of something in terms of dollars. Okay. You can think about it in terms of dollars. If you want um, a hundred dollar handbag and you're earning ten hours and dollars an hour, how many hours do you have to work to buy that handbag? So if you're earning ten dollars an hour and a handbag costs you a hundred dollars. You have to work 10 hours, right? <coughs> so you could say, that handbag cost me 10 hours. So we're just expressing it now in terms of what we're giving up. Okay. All right, so who has the comparative advantage in the production of airplanes? Canada. Canada. Because they have the lowest opportunity cost. Okay, they're giving up the least in order to produce airplanes. Now, let's look at the production of pork. If we look at the production of pork, 
We're going to do the same exercise. The opportunity cost of pork. In the United States, you're going to have to give up. You dedicate all your resources to the production of pork. What are you giving up? 1,500 aircraft. 1,500 aircraft. You're going to be producing right there. And what are you getting? 8,000 pounds of pork. 8,000 pounds of pork. So, what is this if you reduce it? One pound. One pound. So you can come over here and you can say the opportunity cost of one pound of pork is half an airplane. Okay. Now let's look at Canada. If Canada dedicates all of its resources over here, what is it giving up? 3,000 aircraft. 3,000 aircraft and it is getting 1,500 pounds of pork. So, the opportunity cost is what? Two. Two over one or two. So we can say the opportunity cost of one pound of pork is two aircrafts. Who has the comparative advantage in the production of pork? Mm -mm. USA. I said in order to grow a country, we have to increase its resources, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability. Now, what happens if your resource if you can't grow your resources? Trade. You engage in trade. Exactly. By engaging in trade, it enables you to consume at a level outside your production possibilities curve. So um this graph, I am going to show you the PPF for the U.S. and for Canada. So the U.S. can produce 3,000 pounds of pork or 1,500 aircrafts. Can it consume at this point? No. This is the United States. Canada produces 3,000 aircrafts or 1,500 pounds of pork. Can it produce here? No. No. Both, this point is unattainable for both countries. Now, if each country focuses its resources where it has a comparative advantage, okay, if the United States focused all of its resources to the production of pork, and Canada focused all of its resources to the production of aircraft, well, those are both efficient points, but Canada would have nothing to eat, and the U.S. would have nothing to travel at, on. But if they focus their resources on those products where they have a comparative advantage and they engage in trade, then what they're essentially doing is growing their production possibilities curve. Now, if they're trading, and act, if they act as one country, the U.S. can produce 3,000 pounds of pork, Canada can produce 3,000 aircraft, and then they can engage in trade. The U.S. can trade some pork for some aircraft, and now they've expanded their production possibilities frontier. They're at a level that is higher than they were before, and their standard of living has increased. So this concept of comparative advantage becomes the premise for international trade. I mean, this is why we engage in international trade and try to open up new markets because it expands our resources. Okay. All right, questions on this? No? Okay, so there's that.